sewn in You never see the sun when it's shining But those shadows grow so thin Sitting in my kitchen While the rain hits the glass There's one thing I change I never have you back Cause you drag me down How are you? Good. How are you doing? Man, great to see you. How's everything going this holiday season? You know, it's it's interesting. A little better than the last one. It's things to look forward to. and <laughs> So, yeah, just rolling with it. Definitely. That, well, that's a low bar, but yes, I agree with you 100%. Where are you yeah. coming to us from, Kai? I am here at home in uh, Nelson County, Virginia. I love that. I love that. By the way, Kai, what is it about Virginia? Because I was thinking about it. Some friends of our show, like 49 Winchester, are coming out of Virginia. I mean, obviously, Dave Matthews Band has come out of Virginia. Some really cool stuff happens out of Virginia. What is it, Kai? Like, what's in the water there? Um, and, guys... Morgan, and Morgan Wade, who I saw you had on not too long ago. And Morgan Wade, who's yeah. also one of our friends. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, and um, you guys, of course. What's going on there? Um, I think it's just there's this this really interesting blend here where you have the state has the history of the Blue Ridge Mountains, of bluegrass, of old time, of rock and roll, of all sorts of things that kind of blend together really well here. There's country, there's rock, there's soul, there's hip hop, there's, you know, there's such a, a great scene here, like down the scene from Virginia Beach to say, you know, I don't know, Roanoke, Virginia, you know, these areas are very different. It's a huge state in, in the but uh, but yeah, there's such a great blend, and and you'll see we've played so many shows with many different types of artists, and uh, whether they are in your genre or not, and it's just uh, yeah, there's lots of talent swimming around. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, people should definitely check it out. Like you know, uh, Floyd Fest, they should mm -hmm. check that out. They should go to Bristol Rhythm and Roots. Everything around Virginia, lots of really great stuff. So I agree with you, man. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Transmission, what an album, Kai! Unbelievable. Oh, it's coming out uh, January 21st, tw so it'll be like around, you know, around close to when this airs, but what mm -hmm. a great album. Just love the whole thing. I mean, Let It Ride, obviously Drag Me Down, all Julia, all of them. <laughs> love them, dude. Thanks so much. I appreciate you uh, you checking it out and taking the time. And it's been uh, it's been one that we've been been sitting on for, for a while now, so it feels good to finally uh, be putting it out into the world and uh, seeing what happens. Yeah, exactly, Kai. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because in a way, you know, isn't Transmission like one of the most satisfying albums of your career, Kai? And it's exactly because of what you said. You know, you, or for my audience that doesn't know, you originally recorded it. You, it, it was like a, like a quick thing originally. So you could tour in 2020, you know, exactly. obviously 2020 happened. But the fact that like it's persevered, that the album is still relevant, that you guys have like perfected the sound, does it make you almost like more proud of it than before? It does. And I, that's, a, that's a good point. I think that for us, we recorded, like you say, quickly, just thought this would be sort of an in-between record between doing this one, which had more of a live vibe and it was sort of based off a set that we've been playing a lot around that, that time and thought we'd sort of hop in the studio and have another one out by now. But so it goes. And so it's one of the interesting things is it's, it's given me a little removed from the songs because when you're playing them all the time, when you're recording them, when you're in that headspace, um, you can kind of get burnt out on your own stuff. And I think having about a year where I didn't listen to the record. I didn't, you know, get too much into it until, until we were getting mixes back and mastering all that jazz and then getting ready to, to put it out. And then I started getting back into it, which was really fun to be like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this record. And I we think that it uh, sort of captures our live sound, which is we're, we're a live band. We love playing shows. That's sort of how we formed our identity. Um, so we think that this record sort of speaks to that really well. 
yeah yeah absolutely and, and let's let's pivot there actually like really great opening because you guys are an amazing live band i mean people should whenever you, people see lord nelson on like festival posters or whatever go like do that because <laughs> you guys always create such an incredible connection with the audience how do you do it kai and and what i mean is like in research and every time like we've seen it it's like you break the barrier that's the that's the best way i can describe it and you like how do you do it like what's your formula um I, I grew up around music my father's a musician and, and a artist in his own right so for me yeah. sort of this this path and 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 seeing music as um i came sort of late to the recording side of it but and for me it was always about live performance like my started doing it when i was in middle school and and just sort of saw it as the vehicle that i needed to get these songs out and um to connect with people that's how i music is how i connect with people in the world and so this is just the vehicle for me and so i think that as we've moved forward and played shows that i've i've grown more comfortable with that exchange with the audience and i think especially um the, the shows we have played post pandemic um it's altered the way I, I interact with the crowd a lot that i'm i'm very appreciative not that i wasn't before but now mm. more so than ever and i feel like i i feel more empowered to sort of have conversations with the audience that i'm will happily talk to someone from the stage who's hooting and hollering or saying something silly you know like in the past right. i've seen performers really wrinkle at that but uh for me i having that engagement it's like you know this is not this isn't fine China. This is this is utilitarian. This is something that I want people to interact with and and bring together and create community. And so trying to make our shows um, sort of sort of to have that feeling so that people feel yeah. welcome. So they know it's about having a good time about seeing your friends and family and that uh, it's communal. So yeah. that's sort of our our approach towards live music. And love it, love it, love it. But you know, it also comes from the stage. And and Kai, like mm -hmm. you guys have such great chemistry. Whether we're talking about with Callaway, with Henry, it doesn't matter with all of them. I guess the question is, you guys tour all over the country, pretty much all over. Like, mm -hmm. how do you guys maintain such a great working relationship? Like to the point where, you know, you guys know what's coming almost. Like you guys are like the E Street band, you know, like you just know <laughs> what's happening between before it comes. How do you do it? And how do you maintain, you know, like such great relationship. I was talking to someone earlier about this today, and I think that when you play music with someone, you have, I think most musicians will, will relate to this, is that you have an understanding and a, a connection that is hard to explain outside of that context. Mm -hmm. So for us, we, um, we've just been through a lot together. We've ridden a lot of ups and downs, uh, yeah. you know, van breakdowns, wrecks, you know, bad shows, sketchy situations and um and you have to have each other's back and then when so when you're on stage when you're putting a record together there's so much um of that relationship and all those different things baked into that that uh you know we we usually don't have a set list we can play two or three hours without a set list and we just sort yeah. of like to to feel e where each other are at where the audience is at and sort of let that dictate um and that sort of keeps the show very alive and fresh and uh yeah in our personal relationships whether they're, they're up or down or whatever um that always feeds into for you know everyone in the band is no one's here because they think they're going to become a rich and famous rock star it's because <laughs> this is what we do and we love hanging out with each other we love making music with each other and at the end of the day that's what that drives us more than anything to work together yeah yeah well you know we're, we're so happy you guys are, are you know are able to do it it's so frustrating when like brothers like the you know like the oasis brothers or or the black Krauss before they reunited it was like you want to shake them because they make such great fucking music together and it's like <laughs> it's like guys why can't you guys just get along so seeing yeah. guys like lord nelson just kind of like really really focus and, and do that for longevity it's we all win but uh, yeah, yeah. So I want to pivot to the new songs, but but let oh. me let, but let me ask about this as well, um, sure. Kai. Your songwriting in this album, if you don't mind me saying, it's it's some of your best. I, I mean, just looking at your old stuff, you've always been a great songwriter, but I think you're just getting better and better, man. Thank you. What's what's your process like? Like, do you come up with an idea? Do you take it to to Callaway to Henry, and, and you're like, guys, what do you think of this? Or do they bring ideas to you? What's the process with you guys? Um. We, we've we've sort of done everything at different points in this band, um, but generally, I do my best work. Sort of, I go out and collect ideas, and then I sort of bring it close, and then work through it until I have an idea. Then I bring it to the band and say, "Hey, I've got this. Is this a song? What do we think?" Some are more structured than others, and I try to 
with side projects or solo stuff, I have a very clear idea, but with this band, especially I, I crave the input from the other people. Cause I, it has to be collaborative. I want everyone to feel that they have ownership. Um, even if I wrote the chords and the lyrics, you know, the way we put the songs together, the way we produce them, arrange them. So, um, like tooth and nail, our first single as an example, I had that mm -hmm. chorus. And then I wrote the verses really quickly before we went into the studio and I kind of knew what it was going to be. We played it once as a band. Callaway came up with the guitar hook. It all just kind of snapped together and we're like, okay, we got a song. And sometimes it is that easy and, and, and that old cliche, but like it, the ones that come that easy are, are usually gifts. And, um, and so I think for, yeah, for this record, it was, it was very collaborative. Henry has a song, Callaway has two songs. I have eight songs. Callaway and I wrote a song together. So that was a big part of this process is, was to try to keep sort of the, the big tent up and, and have all the, uh, all the folks involved. And so that everyone yeah. has, has a spot in the album they can put their finger on. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but it sounds cohesive at the same time, you know, that's, that's the beauty. And, mm -hmm. um, and Kai, you know, you, you, you do capture that's that life sound in this, in this record that you, that you're talking about. And I guess the question is how do you do it? Because honestly, I think it could have been so easy to just like overdo it or do it too little, but you guys just like, did it just right. Hmm. Like, how do you guys manage to tiptoe that middle line? Like you guys just like found the perfect blend. That's amazing. Well, thanks. Thanks for saying that. That's just, um, you know, we've done three records and I think it's a mix of things. It's, it's getting more comfortable in the recording studio and process. Like we we all come from, from a live background. Yeah. Um, but Callaway, our guitar player, um, and songwriter is a, uh, is a recording engineer. So he engineered this whole record. We, uh, we did most of it over two weekends um, and it really helped us to sort of keep things really focused and in, in that in that small space where all the songs were recorded within close proximity to each other. So there was a, a similar sound. Um, the arrangements would all were all kind of worked out on stage before we went into the studio. Yeah. And um, so for us, yeah, this this was a record that there were we're really proud of because we feel like, yeah, like we were saying earlier, but it really brings sort of our when someone says, what do you guys sound like live? And our last two records we're, we're happy with, but don't necessarily, um, aren't necessarily representative of what we are as a live show. So we feel that this one um, is a little more uh, keyed in that angle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Kai, let me ask about Lord Nelson going forward. And, and mm -hmm. what I mean is you guys are road warriors like we've established, but 2020, obviously like, you know, everyone had to like pull the plug a little bit. Did you maybe learn something about yourself like that you want to maybe like pace yourself a little bit better or or are you like now that like things will open hopefully soon like 100 percent, it's like all hell breaks loose yeah that's a that's a good question and as we're talking today you know we're looking at um we're booking stuff out for the spring we're taking the winter off and but there's a new variant coming through and i yeah. don't know when this will air but you know right now here we are in mid-december and it's it's a uh it's a scary proposition, but we're yeah. looking at, um, you know, there's, I don't think the industry will shut down again and mm -hmm. we'll find a way forward. But for me, um, I think I'm someone who always, I just try to keep hustling, try to keep moving forward, try to say yes to whatever and, and pursue the next gig. So before the pandemic, I was in a sort of a two or three year cycle of just, um, not necessarily my, my healthiest phase and, um, mentally. How so, how so Kai? How so? How so? Um, I think when you're when you're spending a lot of time on the road, it's it's hard to be um, physically and mentally your best. Yeah. And um, it, it's easy for me to sort of I can compartmentalize and push things to the back. And uh, I was doing a lot of that until this came and sort of um, forced us to slow down. And yeah. I was able to use that space to be more creative, to start taking care, <laughs> better care of myself. And I was yeah. able to write a lot more songs with that headspace. Um, so we have yeah a ton of songs banked now and um and in terms of like the band and hitting the road and going forward i mean my expectations now is i'm very grateful for any gig that works out and mm. um i think most people in the industry are incredibly compassionate hardworking um people who are in it because they deeply care about music and i think yeah. that's what will sustain it for all of us and we all have a part to play in that but um it really also was a lesson to me for just sort of letting go. Like we've had so many tours and shows canceled and then rebooked and canceled again that, yeah. um, you know, it's, you got to be able to roll with the, the punches more than ever. And I think more that, than that, ever, right. yeah, that, that can be a hard thing for, for some folks in this, in this life, in this industry, but that's why we're all here. So, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, I think that like the touring industry used to like to plan ahead and, you know, now you plan ahead, but like fingers crossed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. For exactly. sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Kai. You've been so good with your time. Let me ask you about you, like yeah. Kai, the individual, you know, what 2021 is over, 2021 is over. And people always said 2020 was a hard year. And we used to ask, what did you learn? But in some ways, I think 2021 was hard, maybe even harder, mm -hmm. actually, Kai, uh, just because like people didn't kind of know how to adapt and, and some people that were did it. What did you learn out of 2021 that, you know, like, like just in an individual level that, you know, you'll carry forward? Hmm. Um, I think some of what I touched on earlier, but I think that um, I've learned, I've, I've, to have greater patience with many things. Um, mm. Most of all, the, th the things you plan for are are really hard to things. This industry has always been in a hard one to to ride out, but I think this year more than ever, like you said, twenty twenty one's been maybe even harder because we sort of all thought we were getting back into the swing of things, and then there were more false starts and this and that, and it's been yeah. hard to really. Um, and I've seen many people just sort of have breaking points of exhaustion of just you know, hitting the, hitting the end of the rope. And so I think for me, I've been, I've been less stressed and had less anxiety about it going forward and that I, I feel some somewhat at peace with things and that, um, we're working harder than ever on putting this record out and, um, you know, getting good videos, getting good things going out with the whole rollout of this album. And we're really excited about it. And this is the first time I've been able to really devote this much time to putting out a record. Usually we're just touring like crazy and we're all too exhausted to, <laughs> to do all the, all the, uh, the important things about getting the word out. And so that's something I've, I've learned a lot on this end is, is how to sort of, um, sort of gigging your tail off. It's not always the straight ahead approach for me. just being yeah. a working dog, like that, that's the way to get your goals. And for me this year, more than anything has taught me that, um, you can be really productive in other means and you can connect with people in many different ways now and um, and how important it is and how much we all value human connection. And that's what what live music is often about at its core. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Kai. Well, listen, well, after, all, all I can say is thank you. Thank you, because, you know, through your music and through your shows, I mean, you're giving, you know, that's literally just figuratively what you're doing you're giving joy you're giving connection to people through your stories you're giving you know empathy so like what you're doing is a very important thing kai and we can't wait to see this album come to life next year because it's a heck of an album man well i, I greatly appreciate your time and and for uh and for doing all that you do to, to help support the industry and, and artists and I've, I've enjoyed uh the the episodes of the podcast i've had a chance to check out